Well, silly me, I was under the impression that Gibson was the only manufacturer of guitars in, in the United States. But it turns out that Carbons are also manufactured in the United States, and the St. Blues, which I bought at when we were at the yeah. IBC. Because Donna and I met at the IBC in Memphis, and one year later, we were a team competing at the IBC That's in really Memphis. That's really cool. In the semifinals. Yeah. And because of that competition, because of us playing there, we are here at this festival. That's what the IBC will do for you. And it may be like a lot of logistical uh, operations for a musician to get to the IBC because you, you really have to have your yourself together. You can't be like uh, irresponsible or, or in any way not prepared. You need to have your time down, you need to have your money straight, you need to have your plan because it's like you're on the clock, you get this 20 minutes, you're done and if you're not right there with it, yeah. Uh, yeah. then you're you out. Over time. Next. <laughs> and I, the, another thing that I really like about working with Donna is that for many years I was a band leader and I was with a band that expected to make the same money I did but they did not realize that I'm soliciting the gigs, I'm talking to the people on the phone, I'm making up the contracts, I'm faxing back and forth, I'm calling back with more details, I am making sure that the van is properly uh, serviced so it can run. I'm paying the insurance on the van and the car note. I am providing the place for them to stay. I'm making sure they get fed. And that is not something that's easy or free. All of that stuff takes time and money. And so when you come down to the payday and the gig is like a $500 gig or whatever, and then the musician ends up with $60 and they're like, wait a minute, uh, and you, you have to sit down there, you know, for, for Donna understands that because she has gotten gigs and she is a professional person so she needs to know okay what time do I need to be here and how much time do we have to allow to travel and what am I going to need when I'm there well I'm going to need different clothes when I'm in the car when I'm on the stage and when I'm on the stage those clothes are going to need to be clean and pressed and presentable because people are going to be photographing me you would be surprised at the people who are out there expecting to get a professional's money and they don't know that they're supposed to have you know a pressed outfit <laughs> And that when the band leader says, be in the lobby at 10 a.m., that does not mean 10.30 and giggling and you haven't finished doing your hair yet. <laughs> you know, so there are all these little things. And when you've got somebody who's helping you, it makes the whole thing so much easier. Because I felt for years like I was an oxen, that I was harnessed to a wagon load of rocks. Right. And As I a band would, leader, that's a huge job, lugging people around. Then you and get to you have all the responsibility, all of the work. I mean, everything's on you. And then you have to get there and you have to remember everybody's names, all the band people, all the, all the people who work at the bar, the bartender expects you to remember their name, and the, of course the promoters and all the local people that are in the blues societies. And this is everywhere you go. And if you're a good band leader and if you're smart, you remember that stuff. But it takes time and effort and it takes planning and organization. And when you have somebody else that says, calls you up and goes, hey, guess what, so-and-so called me and we could go do this gig and I'll handle these things. It's like, <laughs> oh, thank you, God. 